Good morning all. I thought I'd dig this out um, in an effort to try and get myself back into PIC microcontroller. Not only for the PIC microcontroller tutorials, which I fully intend to continue with for anyone who's invested in the uh, little dev board. Oh, and the programming hardware. Um, but also this PIC lightsaber project. Um, so what we've got is power bank, 5 volts, powering the PIC. Now nothing much else on this board is actually used, so it's pretty much just the PIC chip and the strip of uh, NeoPixels, these WS2812Bs as they are. So let's see how far I got, let's switch that on. And yeah, all it does is it runs a line of white light along the array of NeoPixels and then jumps back to the beginning of the program and does it again, that's as far as I got. Now I've printed out the program for this, here it is, um, it's two pages of A4 and you know there's a fair bit here but actually if you break it down it's fairly easy to understand how it works. So I thought in this video I'd have a go at trying to explain how this works <laughs> if that's possible. So um, I'm going to cut this up with a pair of scissors and then I'm going to use the data sheet for the WS2812B to try and explain how all these loops, and it's just a series of nested loops, it's quite hierarchical really, how this all works. Now if you're thinking that's not very PIC tutorial-ish, well it's not, but then what I thought I might do is do the PIC from both ends. I might do a bottom-up approach, which is teaching uh, very, very basic stuff, flashing LEDs and that sort of thing, but also a top-down approach taking something that we actually want, which is flashing coloured light gizmos, and explaining how a program that makes that actually happen is pieced together. So yeah, bottom up and top down. Now the other thing that has occurred to me is that it's going to be Christmas soon, and uh, this year I'm definitely not going to do anything with ring oscillators. That was an absolute nightmare last year, if it was last year, I think it probably was last year. No, this year I thought I could do whizzy things with NeoPixels. So um, we've got various NeoPixel rings here. Uh, this one was a ring which came with one of these microcontrollers that did sort of pre-built patterns. But that's no fun, is it? We want to do patterns of our own design. Uh, more NeoPixel rings. Or you can use these uh, strips of eight NeoPixels. And what I thought I could do is kind of attach the pick, maybe even get the surface mount uh, miniature ones onto the back of these and then also attach some sort of a USB plug like that. So you sort of just munge these two together and stick a pick on their dead bug style. And then you could just plug these into power banks and you can get like whizzy Christmassy candle effects. So let's start cutting this up into its uh, constituent parts. Uh, that's some um, header stuff there. What's this? Oh yeah, that's uh, setup and loop. I've done it sort of Arduino style. And then the various subroutines which call other subroutines because as I say, it's kind of nested and uh, hierarchical. I'll try and explain how that works, but let's just get these cut up into their various sections. Right, that's a bit annoying. The pixel subroutine got split over two pages, but actually I've cut that out and I can stick that up there. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's get some Pritt stick. Uh, right, let's move all this out of the way because uh, I can't see what I'm doing. I'll put that at the top of the screen. That's probably still going to be quite annoying, isn't it? So let's... Um, I've got uh, my Pritt stick. Morrison's glue stick it is. Let's cut this down and uh, stick it into the appropriate place on here. Yeah, so stick some glue on here. Oops. And uh, stick that where it goes. Right, here are all the pieces. Um, this is the header section, which contains the uh, configuration fuse bits to turn the watchdog timer off. You don't want that interrupting the uh, program and to set the oscillator to the internal 8 megahertz oscillator. Um, some variables there for the delay, some variables there for counting pulses, counting 
LEDs, counting pixels and counting frames. So let's put that uh, up the top there. Then we need setup and loop. Where are they? Um, oh, oh here. Uh, so at origin zero, we do some setup. Now that's mainly um, setting ports to be outputs, uh, setting up the oscillator so that it's slightly raised above eight megahertz. And there's a very good reason for that. And then loop is just a series of uh, subroutine calls, calls animate, which actually does the pattern animation, calls strip, which sends um, a stream of pulses to fill the strip up. And then it calls delay because delay actually um, tells the NeoPixels to action the information they've got and display it on the LEDs. Right, so setup and loop I've put there. So loop calls animate. Now I'll in, indent that so that you can see that it's a subroutine. It also calls strip, so that can go there. And it also calls uh, delay, which as I say is the actual thing which actions it. There's the delay, it's a series of nested um, counts. Now, uh, animate doesn't call anything. It just sets up some uh, registers to increment, I think, the position at which we're changing the on marker. Um, strip, however, calls pixel. So pixel is a subroutine of strip, so I'll put it uh, there. Now, pixel calls LED, so LED is a subroutine of pixel, I'll put it there, and LED calls pulse, so pulse is a subroutine of LED. These are all nested, um, so pixel calls LED, LED calls pulse, pulse executes so many times, returns back to LED, that then increments and calls pulse again. So when you call strip, you actually call pulse. Oh, I can't remember. It's hundreds of times. Right, now we need the data sheet for the WS2812B. And really what we're interested in is this, because this is the stream of data that you need to send. Uh, green bit 7 to green bit 0, red bit 7 to red bit 0, and blue bit 7 to blue bit 0 to light up or to set the data for one pixel. So you actually need to send 24 bits of information, that's pulses, either high or low pulses, I'll come to that in a moment, to um, set the colour and the brightness um, of the three LEDs inside one pixel. So I'm going to need this, so let's cut this out as well so that I'm not manhandling uh, great big unwieldy large data sheets. So yeah, I want that. And then we want this thing because this is how you send a zero code or a one code. Now you need to send a string of zeros and ones to define uh, the brightness and the or the brightness of the green, the brightness of the red, and the brightness of the blue. So you're sending 24 of these to define the color on any one pixel. Now this looks very complicated. It says that to send a zero code, you have a short high and a long low. To send a one code, you have a long high and a short low. Actually, it turns out that the low part can be pretty much any length, despite what it says in this table. Let me cut these out. Now, this table says that uh, T0 high needs to be 0.4 microseconds plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. T1 high 0.8 plus or minus 150. T0 low, which is that bit there. Uh, 0.85 plus or minus 150. T1 low, that bit, is 0.45 plus or minus 150. Really, this is not that critical. Actually, all that the requirement is, is that T0 high uh, for a zero is a bit less than 500 nanoseconds or 0.5 microseconds. Um, T1 high the high bit, if you want to send a one code, has to be a bit more than 500 nanoseconds. These low periods can actually be enormously long, really, really long, but not above 50 microseconds. If you leave the data line, and this is the data line, it's only a single wire, 
uh, we've got VCC ground and the blue wire there is data. So if you leave the data line low for more than 50 microseconds, and I think people have done various um, tests on this and found that this number is fairly flexible. But in other words, if you leave it low for a very, very long time, it takes it as a reset command. Now, what reset means is that data that you've written to these pixels, as you're writing it, it's invisible. You write it in and it's passed down the line. Only when you leave this uh, data line low for more than 50 microseconds, does everything suddenly appear on the display. So that's the sort of display command by um, sending a low pulse for a really long period of time. And that's what this delay does. Delay is almost like display. So this is really easy. To send a zero code, you take the data line high for less than 500 nanoseconds. Now in code, I do that here. Uh, that actually shouldn't be there. That's part of the comment that came off the end of that line. So all I do is I set the GPIO bit and then I clear the GPIO bit on successive instructions, one immediately after the other. Now, this pick is running at eight megahertz. That's internally divided by four to two megahertz, which means that each instruction execution time is 500 nanoseconds. In this uh, setup stuff up here, I tune the oscillator to slightly more than eight megahertz. So the period of one instruction is slightly less than 500 nanoseconds and that conforms to the high period for a zero pulse. So two successive instructions, set the bit, clear the bit, gives you a high pulse for slightly less than 500 nanoseconds. Here's the other one, pulse long, set the bit, do a couple of no ops. No ops also take um, 500 nanoseconds. So set the bit, waste a little bit of time, clear the bit. That produces a long pulse. So that produces a one code. So we either execute these two instructions, which is the pulse short thing, or we execute these four instructions, which is pulse long. And I determine which of these two sections of code I execute by checking the carry flag. So I need to send 24 of these pulses. They can either be the short pulse or the long pulse. In this format, uh, eight pulses for green, eight pulses for red, eight pulses for blue. So here's my pulse subroutine. That just sends one pulse. Further up, here's my LED subroutine. Now you can see there the number eight. So this counts down from eight, uh, calling pulse each time. So this subroutine actually sends eight pulses. So it sends the eight pulses for the green LED. Now, above the LED, so, so this subroutine LED just sends enough pulses for one LED. Above that, we have pixel. This sends enough pulses for three LEDs because this one has a counter set to three. So this counts down from three. Uh, it calls LED three times because there are three LEDs inside each of these pixels a green, a red, and a blue. And then the LED subroutine calls pulse eight times because each LED requires eight of these pulses to define its color. Now, how many times do we need to call this pixel subroutine? Well, how many pixels do I have? I actually have 32 on this strip, but I could cut these strips to any length. And you'll see here that in the strip subroutine, I call pixel there, uh, 32 times, 20 hexadecimal is 32 in decimal. So strip calls pixel 32 times because there are 32 pixels. Pixel calls LED uh, three times because there are three LEDs in a pixel, the three different colors. And LED calls pulse eight times because each LED requires eight bits, eight of these pulses. So when we call the strip subroutine, uh, it calls the pixel subroutine 32 times and the pixel subroutine fires out 24 bits. So the number of bits actually goes out is 24 times 32, 768 pulses. So calling this strip subroutine actually fires out 768 pulses, either short or long. Then you can see uh, up here we call strip and then delay. Delay then once all those 768 pulses 
have gone out to define every single pixel of every single LED. We send out delay. Remember I said delay works a bit like display and the display lights up. Now those 768 pulses actually only produces one frame. So every time this LED, this line of light moves along to the next LED, that's 768 pulses. So that is happening 32 times in order to produce one animated movement from one end of the strip to the other. 32 times 768 is, I don't know, it's quite a big number. So that's really it. Um, it's hierarchical, it's nested. You've got pulse uh, sitting inside LED. LED sits inside pixel, pixel sits inside strip. And that's how we get the multiples uh, by executing this so many times, uh, by calling this, this executes so many times by calling this. It's all nested. So every time all these numbers are multiplied together, uh, this is one multiplied by eight, multiplied by three, multiplied by uh, 24. Where's the 24? I'm confused now. Uh, well, it's eight times three, isn't it? Three eights are 24. So that's the 24 of the pulses. Multiply that by 32 and you've got the 768 uh, pulses, which build up one frame. Now, this repeating pattern is actually simply done by incrementing uh, a register and masking it so that it can only actually count from 0 to 31. And that's what produces this animation of, uh, well, 32 pixels. But there is a bit of an out by one error there because the last pixel for some reason is not lighting up. So I need to debug this slightly. So by modifying this um, code structure, this basic code structure, I can build um, patterns which work on these. This is eight pixels, uh, 12, I think 16, 24. It's easy enough to just change the counts uh, to work around a, a 24 pixel strip and then simply repeat. So we can have nice rotating dots in red, green, blue, or various other colors. Uh, we've got different uh, sizes and shapes of these uh, to make my Christmas decals. And I think I need to get on eBay now and order some surface mount versions. Oh, that's quite warm. Uh, some surface mount versions of this pick. It's the oh, 12F683, this one, the one that runs at uh, 8 megahertz. 8 megahertz using the internal uh, RC oscillator. I'll get some surface mount ones of those. I'll get a little um, uh, 8 pin dip to surface mount adapter thingy so that I can drop the surface mount chips in, program them, and then use the surface mount chips and just sort of stick them on the back of these things, wire in uh, one of those little USB things and sort of munge it together. And then uh, you just plug in a power bank and it's a kind of freestanding flashy lighty thing. Uh, right, so I think it's time to uh, get on eBay. You've had enough of that, haven't you? Cheerio.